All right, I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that you um, can use to apply value with linear perspective. Um, the basic idea with value is literally just covering the paper. You don't have to be too terribly careful about edges. Um, you can always clean those up. The main thing that we're mixing here is line work with the linear perspective and tone. Typically, you want to divide areas with tone rather than line. And this is a perfect way to practice that idea. Rather than, so what creates this division is a difference in value. So what I'm doing here is creating uh, a value that's distinct from anywhere else on the page. And it's fairly dark because it's a window and it's reflecting a background that, that is uh, uh, also pretty dark. So one of the things you'll notice is that I leave all of my marks and I would suggest you do that as well. Your hand is going to get a little messy and it's going to spread value into the page. Uh, some people like to blend and remove marks, but I think that reduces the amount of personality you get into a drawing. And what you want is something that, that is interesting to look at and that shows off who you are. Um, and I would suggest going that route. So you notice what I'm doing here is using the eraser as a drawing tool. And that's something that most people don't think about when they get started drawing. Uh, they think the eraser is a mistake fixer because that's how people use it when they're writing. But in fact, it's a very, it's better as a drawing tool. So what I've done here is the railing or these, uh, the window frame is lighter than the actual window itself. So I've just erased out where it's lighter. Um, it's much easier than having to be careful about exactly where you put a dark tone down. We're going to do a similar thing with a brick pattern up here. Um, one of the things about erasing is that you kind of have to get things dark enough to where the eraser is even going to show up in the way that you want. Um, so what I think of in terms of getting areas dark enough is progressing in layers. And I really don't like to press down hard all the time because that gets exhausting. So I'd rather do multiple light layers over an area to try to get it dark enough. Um, this is where the side of the pencil is going to come in handy. And you can use charcoal for this if you if you wanted. It doesn't matter what the actual tool is. What matters is um, that you're following this sort of process. So here, this is a, a second or third layer that's going to get everything down dark enough. Now you notice one of the things that uh, you can do with a texture is you can rely on the mind's desire to synthesize information and have it make sense. And that means that you don't have to draw every single brick in here. You can draw a few brick-like patterns and the mind will interpret that as this whole section uh, having a brick pattern covering the entire area. One of the issues you run in is that your eraser might not be uh, precise enough to erase these little teeny lines. And you can take a um, utility knife or an exacto knife or even a pocket knife and carve out your eraser and, ma and make a little sharp spot. Um, that's totally fine. It's another good uh, trick to use. So most people when they draw bricks would draw dark lines where the mortar um, goes. But if you actually look at bricks, typically the mortar is lighter than the bricks, unless you have sort of an Austin chalk uh, or light colored brick. Um, so you'll see here, now the brick pattern starts to emerge with the erasure. And it kind of fools you into thinking that this whole section is, is brick when really what I've done is drawn a very small patch. And then after that, you can come back and kind of clean up the lines a little bit if you feel like it. Um, or just move on to the next thing. You know, you do want to be sure that your vertical stay vertical and that your lines that you erase do go um, in the same direction as all the other vanishing points. So you don't want to break the rules of perspective when you're applying texture. And at any time, you can go back and add more detail as you see fit or as you pick up on details when you're looking at this for a long time. 
So the drawing isn't really a fixed thing. Sometimes you can go back into the process and pull ideas from earlier stages that you missed. You should never feel like you're so far along in the, in the drawing that you can't make corrections. Um, this window is, is uh, going to require a slightly different approach. It's lighter in value than the other window. So it's going to come in with a, because I think this is reflecting the sky. Um, uh, so it's going to come in with a lighter tone. Um, and what you'll see here is that rather than drawing each plane of each bit of the frame, uh, I'm just kind of using a wide, uh, darker tone to draw out the frame. So this is what we call using line as a value. Um, the distinction between line and value isn't that great um, when you start approaching it like that. So one of the things that makes this part of drawing interesting and fun is that you can just kind of skip around the drawing um, and do whatever side that you want to do. You can work on a bit at the bottom right and switch to the middle and switch to the top right and then go back down bottom left. It doesn't really matter what order you do this in. Um, so some of the lines that are prominent in this drawing, I'm going back and reinforcing those in pencil um, since they were only done in the red color pencil. Um, and you can use line as a tool. What I don't want you to do is outline everything heavily um, with all the same line weight and darkness and thickness. Um, that actually will serve to flatten your drawing and defeat the whole point of using any kind of depth creating technique like linear perspective and value. So one of the things that is going to happen in a value drawing is that when you apply your first few values, they're not going to be correct. So you're going to be going over that area multiple times trying to get the values the way that you want them because it's all done um, based on relationships. So until you have several values down uh, in relation to each other, you can't see how dark your initial values are supposed to are supposed to wind up. So um, that's one of the things that you'll that you've probably been taught before is that you draw an outline and then you fill it in and then you're done. That's not the case uh, with the process that we want to use. Whenever you begin filling in tone, it's going to be a while before you're before you're actually done with the drawing because you're going to fill in tone and then you're going to realize later that that isn't quite dark enough or maybe it's too dark and then you're going to go back into it and change the value relationships. So now I'm putting another layer back on this bottom window because now I know what value the brick should be and then I don't want the same value for the window because the window is a little bit darker. So I go in and I make a distinction between the window and the brick tone. So it's not that big of a deal to do. You just um, you just need to be aware that that's part of the process. Is making these corrections and developing these relationships. So one of the things my drawing teacher used to say was 90% of doing a drawing is literally covering, covering the paper. And these are the kind of techniques right here, uh, erasing into tone, using tone over large areas. We're going to be revisiting these kinds of techniques um, repeatedly throughout the course, especially when we get into still life and into landscape. So one of the things you notice when I first did this window is that I drew right over everything. Um, and then you don't, what's funny is you don't really lose those lines that you did in the beginning when you draw right over um, something. So uh, you can, you don't have to be as careful as you would think. So one of the things that I didn't do in the beginning was I didn't draw the sidewalk or any kind of grounding pattern. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and knock that in and at this stage uh, because that kind of helps the building become a little bit more convincing. And then I can put a little bit of uh, tone in for the for the grass. I can draw in some lines uh, where the sidewalk is divided out. And then uh, one of the final things that I need to do is actually to really ground the building. I'm going to draw in the ground shadow. 
and then put a basic tone over that. Um, and that just kind of helps to uh, make it feel like you're not drawing a floating wall, that you're drawing an actual building.